Ahoy sailors, and welcome to another episode of On The Map. I'm Captain Beatty, joined always by my trusty first mate, Mr. Nave Pacewell. Yeah. And Red Dog, Quartermaster and SEAL Team Leader, Piffin. And today, we're joined by the one and only Creative Director of Sea of Thieves, it's Mike Chapman! Ahoy! Hello! Welcome aboard! Thank you, thank you very much for, for coming in today and having a chat to us. We really appreciate this, sir. No. Oh, thanks, Captain. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. No, not a problem, not a problem. Listen, uh, Rare looks like an absolutely amazing company with its beautiful grounds, its regular workplace gatherings, and a, and a very pet-friendly policy. How long have you worked at Rare, and, and what's it like to work there? So I'm just gone past seven years, I think, at Rare. So... I think for me, like, Rare as a company was such an important thing growing up, playing Rare games, you know, games like GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong Country, these were the games yeah. I grew up with, so yeah, yeah. being a designer and being at Rare was always, you know, somewhat of a dream, uh, but to be there now, especially at this point in Rare history, yes, you know, we've yes. you know, got this um, successful new IP with Sea of Thieves, you know, still looking to do interesting things in the future with both Sea of Thieves and and their new game, so just a great time to be at Rare. It's, a, it's an absolute privilege to be there with so many talented people. That's it's fantastic, and Everwild looks absolutely amazing. We can't wait to see what uh, what's going to come with that game. Yeah, the, the, te the team are doing some amazing work. So um, yeah, L L Louise and the team will be sharing more soon. But yeah. yeah, they're doing some fantastic work. Oh, definitely. We we are very excited to play it and see it. We can't wait to see what comes with that. So, uh, so Mike, Sea of Thieves is is fast approaching its second anniversary. It's been an incredible journey so far. Uh, when the team at Rare started working on the game, did any of you boys expect it to be played by over 10 million people and have such such an amazing response from the player base? I think I think. The easiest way to kind of explain it is, I don't think we'd, we'd ever want to have jinxed it, um, kind of yeah. thinking those kinds of things. I think, I think what we always believed was, if you, if you make a game with passion, with heart, a game that you truly believe in, you know, you're really trying to push and do your best work. The kind of the business side of it, and mm. you know, sales and all of that sort of, all of that will just come naturally, and you work that bit out. What matters is the quality of the game, doing something you really believe in. And we've stuck true to that kind of vision of how we work. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't really we didn't really think on that though. We made that bit up as we went along. Yeah, no definitely. <laughs> what exactly do you do in regards to development of the game? What's what's your particular niche at rare? That's a great question. Um, I mean it's I mean the easy thing to say it's a bit of everything, but the I guess the like creative director or design director, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the, the role is very much around defining alongside the team, like what is the core vision for the experience we're trying to build. Mm. Like, what are the creative principles? How should it play? How should the art and the game mechanics come together to create this immersive world? It's the world building. It's the lore. It's really just you know the absolute the the vision holder for the ethos of what Sea of Thieves is and. That is important right at the start when you're trying to define that core vision of how the game should play. But then every new feature that you add, you want to ensure that it's being built in that Sea of Thieves way. That you're doing things in a way that uh, players expect. It can also have surprises in there, but you're trying to just stay true to that core vision. So Sea of Thieves feel Sea of Thieves, and then we're also moving that vision forwards. Last week, you and some of the other developers joined in and, and versed Red Pirate Dog and his legendary first mates on the, the first race of Season <laughs> 4 of the Race of Legends. What, what was it like to actually compete in the biggest and longest running community event that players have made on the seas? Oh, it's just, oh, honestly, the, the, whole, the whole thing about that event just meant so much. I, I mean, as I mentioned to you earlier, the idea of the community coming together and using their creativity to make this gameplay out of the tools that we've provided. That's, it's amazing just mm. on that level. I mean, yeah. that was something we dreamt about right at the start of this game. The idea of players coming together and using the tools in unexpected ways. So on that level, it's mind-blowing. But then to see the slickness of the event, to see the passion of Doug, and just the, 
as we were trying to kind of uh, put ourselves through the pace and trying to learn this course so we didn't embarrass ourselves, just, just, um, <laughs> just appreciating the thought and the care that had gone into its design. Um, Definitely. It was great. It was great. And it just, it made me, it made me want to take part in more of these kind of events because just, you know, it's the best bit, it's the best bit about the game. It's one thing releasing content, it's another thing to see the community using it in unexpected ways. So, no, 100%. amazing, amazing Definitely. work to everyone involved with those kinds of events. The tools and not rules approach that you guys have had has certainly set Sea of Thieves apart from any other open world game. It's led to, you know, amazing new ways for players to have adventures with their friends. Uh, and each new tool that you've added so far, whether it be, you know, new instruments, the speaking trumpet, the rowboats, the harpoons, has completely <laughs> changed the way that people have had these adventures. They're, you know, you add one small little tool and everything changes. Uh, uh, yeah, look, absolutely. I'm assuming that you guys have plans to, to further expand upon these tools moving forward? Oh, definitely. I, th I think, I mean, from every level, even down to the items that players have, down to the creatures they encounter, the kind of emergent events they can have, everything. We always try and design uh, mechanics and features in a way that, on the surface, they might seem really simple and accessible, but they can com be combined in different ways. So you add one small thing and it completely changes the combinations that players can have in the game and create new experiences. So it's like we say it, it's absolutely true, but it's the heart of how we design the game. And it's served us well so far and uh, it's something we want to push on more and more this year. And even, even just talking about um, Race of Legends and the Kings of Fish and all of those kinds of events that you know, people like yourselves are involved in. It's a lot of effort to organise those events and do them justice. I think a, a big yeah. focus for us this year will also be um, making that process of running events like that a lot easier. Because some of the, I mean, they're really hard to kind of organise if, you, if you're obviously oh, using yeah. servers and you're trying to curate them to, to make it really watchable for viewers. No, so that's right. That's anything right. we can do to take that friction away uh, is what we're going to be looking at. Say it, Thieves. Like, I, like it, it's been probably one of the most significant games that have ever come out of Rare. Like, at, le at wow. least for me. Like, I, I haven't. Amazing to hear you say that. <laughs> well, well, I, I haven't looked at the stats or anything like that. Like, like I, I don't know how it was in the ways of the actual sales and stuff. But at least for me, this this one stand out. Like, since like Donkey Kong, uh, going going way back to Donkey Kong Country and stuff. I'm getting shot at. Mr. Hall, Mr. Pippen just called it. Sorry, go, Dave. Yeah, anyway, I, I would have said, like... Clearly the skeletons like are fans of Donkey Kong Country. They're taking, taking aim at you. Oh, they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they're, they're diehard fans. And they're getting ready to take me out. It's a great now, game. Would, they're they're welcome. Would you say that, uh, like, Sea of Thieves has changed the way games are developed in, in the studio as, as far as, like, how it used to be back in the old Nintendo days? Undoubtedly. I mean, absolutely. I think I think the way at the start of Sea of Thieves, it was it was a conscious effort to do things differently. And I guess traditionally on a game, the games games I've worked on in the past, and what you kind of expect is a lot of it is done initially on paper before you build anything. A lot yeah. of any, a lot of it is kind of designed theoretically, and sometimes there's paper prototypes. But when you start building something, it's a lot more setting stone. Whereas the focus on Sea of Thieves was, let's put a core team together, aligned around that core vision of players creating stories together, and then let's prototype, let's find the fun fast. So when we're pitching the game to people and we're explaining what it is, part of it is the, you know, this is what the opportunity is, this is what we think the gameplay is going to be, this is what you'll experience, but then come and play it and sit down, mm. put a pair of headphones on and experience what we've just described. and. There's no greater way to build confidence on a team and confidence with people external to, to Rare by allowing them to play what you're pitching them. So yeah. the prototype allowed us to try ideas really fast. You know, the idea of how could we get four players to interact on the galleon and truly feel like they're working together? How could we make these procedural quest systems? How could we, um, you know, have this kind of seamless open world? It was all kind of prototyped first, and that allowed us to make mistakes, fail fast, and then iterate. So by the time we were writing 
like real code code for the finished version and we were designing the final features it was almost like we were making the sequel to that prototype mm, taking yeah. all the learnings of what we've learned and making it look beautiful making it feel like this immersive world and that is exactly the kind of approach that we're taking now in our future games mm. of let's try and find the fun fast let's put the gameplay absolutely uh, front and center find the right gameplay experience and then kind of build the momentum and make it look beautiful that's that's absolutely fantastic amazing. yeah that's right the uh, the tall tales are are amazing and well mm. played to uh, the whole team over there for for these fantastic additions to the game the mood that they create the lore they reveal the new characters and the stories they're one of our favorite new features of the game and to be able to have oh, a, amazing. To, to be able to have a story driven narrative but still have the risk of the open world multiplayer experience in in this game is next level obviously you know spoiler alert uh, captain flameheart's soul was set free in the last tall tale which is very exciting uh in the previous <laughs> updates such as the hungering deep and the cursed sails crews had to you know work together to achieve a goal moving forward uh, with future tall tales are there any sort of plans in the future to uh to to make crews work together to complete tall tales Definitely some thinking. There's, there's definitely some thinking around that, particularly with the first set of Tall Tales right at the very start. Mm. Um, just to go back a little bit, it was very much, obviously we're looking at, you know, how are we going to move Sea of Thieves forward? What features are we going to design and what's going to enhance the experience? And the big gap um, and something that myself and the team were really passionate about was this sense of giving players more of an authored narrative, trying yeah, to yeah. enrich the world with characters and their motivations and you know bringing more of that kind of you know the indiana jones vibe to see a theme yeah was yeah. something we we're really passionate about um and we did consider at the time you know what where what's the right level to pitch this is it more like uh, it's you, you've got to work together you have to have a crew to do them or do some of them require multiple crews to work together and there was a lot of early ideas for stories that incorporated that i think the opportunity we saw though was um to, to allow solo players to enjoy them as well and the original idea for the shores of gold was it's really your entry point to the world mm. that it could be something that a player would start to play and understand more about the sea of these world and the law and hopefully fall in love with it as they play because it's set within it's still set within a shared world mm. where anything can happen and what i will say is we probably did get a little bit carried away <laughs> in terms of the difficulty uh, of some of the tall tales, and I think that's great for engaged players. But um, there's definitely some puzzles in there where we we look we like the puzzle design was oh I just yeah. designing those puzzles was amazing was amazing, and and we probably we definitely got carried away. Um, but some of those the kind of learnings of building shores of gold and the cinematic flair that we wanted and the feel of the music and the emotions we were trying to convey you definitely saw a lot of those learnings put into practice with Seabound Soul I mean Seabound Soul is mm. the tale it is because we've gone through those learnings with the first nine tall tales yeah um, so there's definitely an opportunity to do that in the future uh, but I think there's definitely more stories we'll want to tell first with allowing solo oh, yeah. players to also be able to play them. What have been mm -hmm. some of your favourite player stories or clips that you've seen come out of the community since Sea of Thieves launched? Oh wow, I'm, well, there's just... feels like there's, um, there's a few every single week. I think yeah. what I will say is um, a, lot of the, a lot of the things that you know inspired, inspired me, inspired the team early on were I mean, even even crews singing shanties together and yeah. totally maintaining character where it really feels like a pirate crew and they're speaking in a pirate voice and they're totally immersed in the experience. That was something, I mean, believe it or not, right at the start you think, oh, will people ever really do this? Will mm. they Will they ever get so lost in the experience and not do it? And that, obviously, that happened very early on. And, Tons of our like tons of our players in their community do that now. They're so immersed in the game, you know. They're singing their shanties. They're writing their own shanties. It's, you know, um, community members like Liz Larue and, and Fox Die uh, and, and you know, Nerd Propellant are making physical versions of yeah. you know key kind of elements it's, of it, the game. And that is, stuff yeah. is that stuff never gets old. It's unbelievable. It and is. Even, it really is. Even sorry, go ahead. 
No, all, all three of us have got items from Loot and Liz and Nerd Propellant, and you're totally right. It's it's amazing. Like you can you can just look at like you know all all the all the guns that Fox Toy's done and all the all the uh, you know all of the, the the weapons and the the cursed cannonballs and things that uh, Nerd Propellant's done. And Loot and Liz, her tavern signs are just next level. They're they're amazing. They're so good. They are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looked, she she made all, from the game world. That's right. She she made all of the trophies for our Kings of Fish tournament that got sent to all the winners. It's, she does such amazing work and uh, yeah you're totally right seeing that sort of stuff it, it just goes to show uh, you know exactly how much this game is loved and and how far into it people get and you know they come home from work after a hard day and or, or they come home from school or university or whatever they be doing and you know they come home and they kick up their feet and they just forget about you know the real world and for that you know hour two hours three hours they're a pirate that that is what Sea of Thieves is all about. That that is mm. that is Sea of Thieves as at heart. It's a it's a world where you take one look at a screenshot and you just want to escape into that world and have adventures and live out that pirate fantasy. It's it's what drove the choice around the art style to make it look really appealing. It's what drives all our choices around mechanics in the game and the way we present them visually to players. It is a it, it's it's an it's another world where you can escape into and you can truly role play. That's right. Uh, as a pirate, I mean that that's the thing that we're still inspired to to keep building. Obviously, movies like you said, Indiana Jones and The Goonies, and you know books like Treasure Island, you know they've had a huge mm. impact. They've had a massive impact on the way that you guys have designed the game. What what other films or books or stories does the team take inspiration from when it comes to the Sea of Thieves? I think, I think one of the Right at the start of the project, I think the three things that we we kind of referenced, um, if you think about when we're trying to explain what Sea of Thieves was um, to other new members of the team or people visiting the studio, it was the fantastical pirate world of Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. plus the kind of the wonder and the freedom of being at sea in Wind Waker plus the humour and the camaraderie and the teamwork seen in the Goonies. Add those three things together, that's what Sea of Thieves is. Or at least what Sea of Thieves could feel like to play. And then obviously it's got its own kind of special bit as well, but those kind of three things were probably the initial inspirations. And then you've got the whole raft of other pirate things like, you know, Hook, big fan of Hook. You know, it's oh probably yeah. A, Bit of a divisive film, but like obviously a lot of people love that film. I absolutely adore that film. Me too. Um, yeah. But like you think of like Peter Pan and Captain Hook and like all these kind of like fantasy pirate settings. Mm. Uh, Monkey Island is a massive one, Definitely. obviously in terms of its in terms of its humour and the world that it paints and all the colourful characters, um, vibrant locations. So like. Yeah, they're, they're probably the main ones, I would say. Uh, I tell you one thing: you ever put a Jack Sparrow costume in the uh, in the Emporium, you guys are gonna be rich. You're gonna be rich, I'm telling you, Mike. <laughs> it's a it's a sure fire bed, lad. <laughs> Take the money and run. Put Jack Sparrow in the Emporium. <laughs> a lot of a lot of conversations would have to be involved to to make that. Oh happen, yeah, but that would that would that would absolutely be, uh, be amazing. But I, yeah. think, I think like at it, at its core, like Indiana Jones. Um, Goonies, even going right back to I mean, my, my favourite book is probably Treasure Island. But I yeah. think, like, think of like that kind of that adventure feel where there's always a there's always a secret passage at the back of a waterfall. There's pirate mm. caves and the ships hidden in caves. All of that. That um, yeah. I think I think for a certain type of player, just promises so much escapism. Just makes your mind wonder. I mean, that's really what we're trying to tap mm. into, no, which is it's not the dry historical, you know, um, slightly horrifying real history of pirates. It's the it's the fantasy of pirates, which is the it's really the it's the promise of bending and breaking the rules. It's why kids love pirates, because it's all about the freedom to like, live your life the way you want to live it. You haven't got to conform to these rules. It's the f and then all that's embodied by the freedom of ships and being on the ocean. That's what we're tapping into and and the idea that the mechanics themselves have that freedom, I think I think that's why the core gameplay and the wrapper of Pirates go together so well. It's 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 just that freedom to have your own adventures. Um, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, what's your favourite weapon, Mike? Favourite weapon? Ooh. I, ha I mean, I have to say Cutlass. I have to say Cutlass. Well played. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the classic Pirate weapon. Um, 
And it's a hard, it's a hard thing to get right in a multiplayer environment. And like we're looking at ways we can improve it, you know, move it forward without, without we're bringing the community with us and not kind of changing muscle memory too much. But I think the cutlass is the ultimate pirate weapon. It definitely is. A hundred percent, it is. <laughs> Something that. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Why would you filter that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, it's a naughty word, that's why. No, no one at Rare goes through the filter and manually types all the things that we find offensive. It's just, it's, it's a similar filter to what's used in the um, the Xbox Live Gamer Tag filtering. I believe. Uh, right, um, right. We haven't added macros. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean that that's a that's a an, an interesting. An interesting thing, especially when you think about the cross-play and cross-play opt-out and how PC players interact with console players, I think there is a fine line between um, what's an exploit versus what's mechanical mastery. I think I think ma macros are... It's a difficult thing. It's obviously unique to PC. Um, mm -hmm. You know, players setting these shortcuts to kind of combine things together. I think... I think it's something that's going to happen anyway. I think it's it's almost like an expectation for a, a hyper-engaged audience on PC. I think macros are something that we we would certainly we certainly look at on a case-by-case -case basis when we're aware of them to see what players are doing, how they're circumventing the mechanics. And there are points where we have stepped in in the past and we've patched up kind of a gap that a macro can expose. Right. Um, and there's a lot more of that coming. I think some of them you you. You know, it is like whack-a-mole. You know, once you once you kind of fix one, others are going to spring up, and and there is a fine line with stepping on players' kind of ingenuity and their creativity of using the mechanics. Um, but I think if there's if there's if there's a macro that really kind of exploits a gap in the game mechanics and leads to behaviours that we wouldn't want to see and could mm. really ruin the experience for other people, that's when we do kind of step in and we we, we try and kind of patch those holes. How has the Sea of Thieves community affected you as a developer of the game? That's a great question. That is an absolutely fantastic question. I think, I think when you work in the games industry, you want to believe that the passion that you have to make games and give people a new experience, you want to believe, I mean, like, there's no way to understate it, you want to believe that gaming can be a force for good in the world, it that can. it's more than just throwaway entertainment. And, you know, as I said, on one level, seeing people use mechanics in a way you haven't expected is incredible but I think the ones that you really really take away is when you meet people and you hear stories of how players have overcome a hard time in their lives or a difficult breakup or financial issues or just any kind of you know, period of depression or darkness that that a game has seen them through it and, and we hear those stories on Sea of Thieves you know, people getting married in the game, meeting their partners, meeting friends they never would have met otherwise, mm, unless that, they were playing Sea of Thieves. That, that's the like stuff Captain that... Scruffy. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, oh, it's just... It, it's, it's on a completely other level. That's the stuff yeah. when... That's discussed in our all hands at Rare, when we have our team-wide meetings, and there's all these examples, and emails get sent around the team. Like, everybody takes it to heart. And I think... All of us at Rare, uh, when speaking to the team, you know, whether it be me, Joe, Craig, Drew, any of the any of the kind of design leads or engineering leaders, it's impossible not to have sometimes a tear in your eye when you're telling the team of how the game has touched people. So, it's just you realise um, what a privileged position it is, and it's what's frightening it. It is so easy to forget. It's so easy to go back into that game development bubble of not seeing the impact that every decision you make every day can truly have on people. And we, we always try to endeavour to hold on to that. Um, but yeah, an another story will come out or someone will grab you at a show or an event and you'll just be remembered. You'll just remember again like the impact that the games like this can have on people. So yeah, it's it's just it's incredible and it, it's inspiring it's inspiring to to want to do more and want to do more with games the games like this and um, that can bring people together and show them you know the magic of multiplayer i mean the the magic that games can have bringing people together like it's yeah truly inspiring
We've spoken to a lot of players about what their favorite update has been, and, and most of them say the Hungering Deep because of the way that it brought all the players that, you know, you, you're not normally, you know, sailing with other boats, and then all of a sudden it's like, you gotta go out and find some friends to fight this shark lad. And the way that it brought people together, and the lore and the atmosphere that the update added when it was released, it was a lot of people's favorite. What has been your mm. favorite update to the Sea of Thieves so far? Not just from a sense of, you know, you helped to design it and it's something you're very proud of, but to play. What, what's been one of your favorite updates so far? I think Hunger in Deep would definitely be, if not at the top, very near the top. I think mm. for exactly the reasons that you, that you mentioned. I mean, the, the seas themselves were more friendly. They at were, the time yeah. of that update because everyone was brought together with that kind of like that shared goal of, of taking on Merrick's Merrick's nemesis but I think I think a special time beyond the initial launch and then that first Hunger in Deep update I think I think just anniversary um, just the anniversary update in terms of the scope of the content that mm. was an electrifying moment on the team because we had we had this ambitious goal of let's go create the closest we can to a Sea of Thieves story campaign. Let's tell this cohesive <coughs> narrative that'll make the game feel lore-rich and allow people to role-play easier in this world and understand more about why the world the way it is and, you know, the whole story of the Gold Hoarder and the Pirate Lord. That was, that was an amazing moment. But at the same time, the same update had fishing in there, kind of a new mechanic they could use there out on the waves, and then Arena completely different design challenge of a competitive environment and that just that was the team firing on all cylinders that was the team like really stretching what we could do and mm, yeah, yeah playing that first playing that playing that at home after spending so much kind of kind of kind of pouring so much love into that update that was that was an amazing moment the sea of thieves comics uh there's so much fun to read the artwork is fantastic and the stories that are in them <laughs> Uh, they're great. We've we've all got them. We've all read them. And uh, cool. the, the, and the origin ones as well. Uh, got the that's origin. what I was about to say. The, the latest ones, the origins ones. They're they're so good. As hearing the stories and, and reading the stories, should I say, of the uh, the way that the Order of Souls came to be and, and the three girls that ran away and the mm -hmm. you know the, the the young trader lad that was trying to you know uh, help his wife out and ended up you know becoming a gold hoarder they're like these stories Twice are agreed yeah definitely these these stories are so good uh you know i i'm assuming that there are further plans to expand the comics in the future uh yes yes i mean i mean we we, we typically get together and um normally myself adam park pete hence and then uh a, like a, a writer we get together and think about what what kind of stories can we tell so got lots of ideas for how we can expand expand the law through the comics I mean the opportunity is that you can see the elements in the comics or novels or, or other expanded expanded universe materials and then that that eventually can make its way in game and like and as you know the RPG as well everything we do outside of the game is is Canon so yeah definitely lots of plans there to do more is there going to be a, an inevitable end day? The Sea of Thieves, where the servers turn off and and don't come back on. It's dark. God, I hope not. Gen because, yeah, genuinely, uh, that is the that has to be some kind of wild community speculation. I have never <laughs> heard. I mean, that would not even make sense. Um, obviously, we're a, with the on Xbox. We are the most successful new IP this generation, and oh, we've sure. got a thriving we've got a thriving community. Ambitious plans for this year and years beyond. Um, so, see if these will exist as long as players love it and are playing it. Like and it really is. I love that. It really is that level. Piece of I mind mean, for <laughs> Yes. For all of us, I think. I mean, it's, it's it's you know like that, it's, that it's, thought of it turning off would be oh my god that's that's yeah that's quite a scary thought. Yeah. No, do not it do is. not entertain that. I uh, will not. Like we've got a thriving Never. community and we want to keep expanding this experience and that's right. keeping Excellent. it relevant as well. Keeping it relevant for. For audiences as, as kind of games move on and platforms move on but i yeah, think cool. kind of the the mission for xbox rares place within xbox and you know 
generations and moving on but like all of those games still being accessible and still being relevant i mean it, it lines up so well with what we want to do with Definitely. sea of thieves so that's right you look at you look at something like uh look at something like world of warcraft you know that's been going for how many years now it's been running for so that's long. Uh, half my yeah. age i think like yeah, it's 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 crazy it's been going for so long so Look, having said that, I can assume that with the inevitable release of the Xbox Series X later in, later in the year, there are plans to move Sea of Thieves over to the new generation of console. Well, all of that, all of that is all of that um, is completely seamless anyway. I mean, that's a commitment made by yeah. made by Xbox and the team mm. that you know if you've if you've invested in Xbox, Xbox is the ecosystem. All of that moves with you onto the next machine. That's down to games yeah. and controllers so it's just yeah. a it's a seamless thing for us that we're we get to do the good thing right which is we just get to focus on the game and keep entertaining players with new features and gameplay stuff to those who yeah who run the, the console i'm assuming that moving over to the xbox series x we won't be having to reset our pirates or anything like that i mean it, it'll be completely seamless it'll be completely seamless like all of your game pass games and all of that it just just works seamlessly just oh, that's, no idea yeah. what happened <laughs> That's right. That that'll be so good. We really can't wait for this next generation of console. It looks it looks so fantastic. Like the amount of power it has. It's uh you know I think it's exciting, that's yeah, it's definitely really exciting, yeah. yeah. It, it opens up a lot more to you guys as well. You know with you know having the capability to bring more to the game because of the next generation of console. That's uh, you know that's that's fantastic. That's that's something that we're all I think going to be incredibly happy with. So, Mike, aside from, you know, Sea of Thieves and, you know, obviously how much time and effort and... Damn these skeletons! Uh, aside from Sea of Thieves and obviously the amount of... Uh, thank you, Mr. Facewell. The amount of time and effort you guys put into it, you know, and having a passion for this game, it would clearly make it your favourite game on, on, you know, to play, you know, in your free time if you, were to, if you were to chill out, if you were to just go home and go, oh, that was a great day work in Sea of Thieves. I'm going to play some Sea of Thieves. Is that something that happens to you? Do you find that you, you go home after work and, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to have a sale of some noise. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's this weird thing where normally when you make a game and it's released, the last thing you want to do is go play that game because you've spent however many years immersed in it. But I think we've got there's so many Athena 10s and Pirate Legends within the studio and I play every weekend because it's a game that's different every time and mm. we're still developing it, it's still current for us, we're still being surprised by what we see in the game. So it's really unique in that aspect for us working on the game is that we've still got this passion to go play it. So like, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's my favourite game. Um, I would say, um, which is yeah. really interesting to say that I've also worked on it. Oh yeah, that's that's great. Uh, what other Xbox games have you uh, found that you've really enjoyed playing over the last couple of years, uh, aside from Sea of Thieves, of course? Oh, I'd say um, absolutely loved games like Cuphead and Inside and Ori. Really enjoyed those experiences. Recently, really enjoyed mm. The Outer Wilds. Oh, yeah. uh, and the Outer Worlds, and people always get confused with those two. Or oh, really, really kind of enjoyed the Outer Worlds. Um, oh yeah, you know, yeah. kind of that Fallout style gameplay. Love the Outer Worlds. Really kind of clever ideas. Um, I actually really like Void Bastards as well. It was kind of this really kind of um, goofy kind of. It's got this kind of British sensibility. I really enjoyed yeah, that. that one, I think. But like, there's so many games I've got in my backlog as well that I just haven't oh, had time yeah. to to actually go finish. But mm, yeah, it's, it's been a good, pretty good year for games. It certainly has. Yeah, you got games like uh, Jedi Fallen Order that that came out. I, I've had a blast playing that. That's that's fan. That's probably the best Star Wars game I've ever seen. It's it's, it's great. Uh, I know that me and Mr. Pacewell have been playing a lot of No Man's Sky. That's that's absolutely great. Right, it's space pirates. Space pirates. Yes, We're space pirates. Played a lot of that. I still no, use my bloody it, uh, voice in that game. It's, I don't know why. I just do it. It's it's allowed. It's still it's still in law in world. No, definitely. Um, but no, yeah. I need to check out um, Jedi Order. I'm a massive mm. Star Wars fan, but I'm looking forward to playing that. We're very excited to see what the future holds for Sea of Thieves, and also what the future holds for uh, for Rare. As a company, because you know we're very excited about Everwild. We we really can't wait to you know get our first look at that and uh, and see you know exactly what what the game's going to bring. We're very excited for that, uh, and also for the, the future of Sea of Thieves. 
it's our favorite game and we're, we're very excited and look from, from all of us that on the map and all of us in the sea of thieves community might you know thank you to you and thank you to all the other developers for the hard and consistent work that you've done bringing us this oh, this I... amazing journey it, it's absolutely great and it's it's touched all of our lives in in such and i couldn't extend that enough myself that's right it's touched all of our lives oh. in 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 great way I just disconnected from the damn game again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And in I the middle, lazy beard, eh? in the oh man, no, in the middle of a roaring speech and and oh man, if this is that connection crap yeah, again, yeah. I'm gonna be upset. I, I'd say it's probably a lazy beard, maybe. No, I've been moving around. Sleepy beard. Oh, okay. Like I was saying, uh, this game has touched so many people's lives in so many ways. So, look, thank you very much to you and, and all the team at Rare for your hard work. We, we really can't wait to see what's coming in the future for Sea of Thieves. And, uh, yeah, just thank you again. It, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, like, it, it, yeah, it never gets old hearing stuff like that, that we've had an impact on people's lives. That's, that's all we can hope for. Give them a great, great gameplay experience, but also, hopefully, it goes a little bit further than that, so... No, definitely. Yeah, from, from me, from everyone at the team, like, all we can say is thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming on today. We really appreciate it. You are very, very welcome. That was great. It's an absolute pleasure. Oi. From everybody at On The Map, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Captain Beatty, joined always by me trusty first mate, Nave Pacewell, Piffin. Fighting the skeletons. The fighting skeletons and the creative designer from Sea of Thieves, Mike Chapman. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Thank you. Dark pleasure.